Good morning, y'all. God bless y'all, or I should say good afternoon. I'm right here making our delivery. Hopefully the cans haven't spilled over. <laughs> I got empty cans and I had to break kind of hard somewhere nearby here because traffic stopped. Well, a buddy of mine asked me why I stopped picking up hitchhikers because he became a truck driver not that long ago. And he asked me why I stopped doing it. And honestly, it's the times. Yeah, the reason, the reason why I stopped picking up hitchhikers is because of the time. 117, what the fuck, man? Let me, what the fuck? Hold up, let me go ask. Am I going the wrong way? I think I am, huh? Yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. 117. Let me go ask, because I have no idea where the fuck I'm going, bruh. Dora, 117, is it here or other side? Thank you. Yep, see? That's what happens when you don't ask and these motherfuckers don't tell you nothing. Hey, like I said, I'm trying to be a good Christian. Relax. I never, I never said I was... Mother... I never said I was perfect, so... One, one, seven. So going back to what I was saying, why did I pick up, why did I stop picking up hitchhikers? One, times have changed, bruh. I can honestly say when I did it, I felt a little bit more com like comfortable than I do now. Cause now in these times, you don't know like, I mean, you've never known who's who, but it's never been this bad or like, you know hey -ya. mother don't panic don't panic oh. yeah. Yeah, kiss my ass man. okay because yeah, nowadays you don't really know who's who like for me I did it before. I mean, I've always carried. But nowadays, I feel like even if you do carry, people are just going to be like, I'll kill us both and just hold on to the steering wheel and not give a crap. <laughs> Happy dad. Isn't that... What's his name? The one influencer's um, um, beer or whatever? Or am I tripping? Hey, I don't know, man. I don't drink, so. I feel like it would be more dangerous now. When I did it a couple of years back, yeah, it was hard times, but I felt like you weren't in much of a danger, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like people weren't just inherently bad. You know? Now it's like people are, I feel like are just out there to, like, just harm you and shit no matter what whether you're trying to help them or not that's one and then two i've always carried so i never felt unsafe if that makes sense like i always thought you know what i'll carry nothing's ever gonna happen and if anything does i always just carry it on my left hand side when i pick up a hitchhiker and when i don't i always carry it allegedly tucked away somewhere by my seat so I never really felt like I was too far away from um, from my um, from my gun. So I mean that's always been a thing. I always carry a hammer or like a bat to check the tires. Right now I'm hoping that these cans haven't spilled either. And uh, I feel like now even if you do carry that, yeah, there's people just out there who don't really give a shit. <laughs> Hold up. Yeah, let me move my axles now. Hmm. 
Let me just open them. When I'm closer to back there, because yeah, right now I feel like if I do go too far a little bit, things might spill over. So let me back up. Oh. Yeah, so like I was saying, safety, right? So for me, I always felt safe picking up hitchhikers. But I stopped doing it. So reason number one, times have changed. Two, I mean, I've always felt safe. But number three is actually because... Oh, crap. Reason number three why I stopped picking up hitchhikers was because... The second to last person I picked up was a recovering alcoholic I picked up in Arizona. Huh? He was hitchhiking to go back to Washington. We and we started chopping it up and talking. I mean, I was just driving him a couple of hours up the way. Whatever my logbook. Whatever my logbook um, would allow me to, right? But I dropped him off earlier in Flagstaff because we got to talking and he started telling me that he used to be a woman beater. <laughs> he would abuse his wife and his kids and that hit close to home. So for me, I couldn't do it. So we did get to. So we did get to talking, he's telling me, you know, like, well, he was all drunk out. He would hit his wife, his kids. He did that for years, and don't get me wrong, I'm proud of the fact that he was recovering, but that hit close to home for me, because that's how I grew up. Not that it's any of your business, but, you know, I grew up in an abusive home, and, uh, you know domestic violence environment for me it wasn't that i felt unsafe for from him it was more so that like i guess it triggered me to get angry and be like you know f this guy f this person and it got me angry and i'm like i can't be out here picking up people whose stories trigger me not for his safety but for mine and that's why i was like one of the reasons give me one second i'll be right back Son of a bitch. Did I do that? Was that for me? Was that me? You're good. Oh, oh. Where's it go? You did it. Oh, cool. Man, for a second I thought it was me, but I was like, did I do that back now? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, so like I was saying, for me, was that. You know, it got me thinking, like, I can't be out here getting mad at people for their stories and having them trigger me. Or, like, how about if we do get to talking and he starts telling me more stories, you know, or, like, I did this to my kids or I did that to them. And it's, like, it's crazy. You know, with, 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 um, with this person telling you, like, you know what, I did, did this, I did this to my wife and my kids. And you feel some type of way about it. If that angers you, imagine if you do encounter somebody with the story of them touching a child or are, are were a woman and he's telling you the story. No matter how in control you want to consider yourself of your actions, your emotions, that affects you. That gets to you in a way. So for me, I was like, if this story got to me and it hit so close to home that it angered me this much, imagine if I do pick up somebody who tells me that they've done this to people that they've hurt elderly people children women to in a way where it's it's that heavy you know and to this day i'm i thank god and i'm thankful i never encounter somebody like that i encounter people who were assaulted who've been victims of that and it's like 
I thank God I never encountered somebody who did that because it it can change your life. You know. So for me, it's that's the main reason why I stopped picking up hitchhikers because you don't want to encounter somebody with that story that they they did this to people that they hurt people, and it gets to you on that way while your while your anger is getting to you and you have a weapon. You know, you have something to defend yourself. And let's say you do tell them, hey, you, I'm going to need you to get out the car. Or, I can't do this. And they don't want to. You know, it's you're put in a spot, in a difficult decision and in a difficult spot. Because if they don't want to leave, you have to, you know, get into it. And you got to think about it. For me, I thought about it more so like I stopped picking up. As the years went on, I stopped picking up people because I started thinking more about my family. Uh, I started thinking more like about the actions. Like if something does happen, where am I going to be? Who's going to provide for my family? And I always tell people, you know, like that's the reason why I stopped doing it. Because you don't want to encounter somebody whose story gets to you so deeply that it causes you to lose control of yourself. It's in these times, I wouldn't suggest doing it. But if you are doing it, may God keep you safe. May God bless you. Next one.